So what I want to talk about today is lighting with Cycles Render. So I've got my uh, I've got my stuff set up here, and uh, let's just let's just take a look at what this looks like. This is what's guys. This is what's pretty typical when you first start off and you you change into Cycles Render. You've got a point light here, and if I remember the uh, the default for the light is um, 200 or 100. Um, oh yes, I know. Whatever. So 200 or 100. Uh, is the is the default and um, it gives a nice it gives a nice general light I don't think I have any other lights in here it's actually a little brighter than I was expecting it to be um, nope just that and uh, the world yeah you can give the world a surface too we'll, we'll deal with that later so so now what you have is you have this just this kind of what is called a point light and a point light is basically like a light bulb it's a point of light. It gives off light in all three directions, or three dimensions. It's more than three directions. Three dimensions, you know, in all three axes, and it just kind of illuminates everything everywhere. Now, if I move it around, you'll see that it takes and, and doesn't change too much, but you can definitely see how the lighting is changing coming behind. Okay, so now I've got a brighter spot here. If I take the power up, now it's, it's doing obviously a lot more. And if I come on over here, it's doing a lot more. And you'll see that what you've got here is if I rotate down here on this, you can kind of see the, you can see the highlight here of the shine from the light. Lights are going to be visible as highlights. And so one of the things that you can also do with a light is you can um, give them a color. So if I take the color of my light and I just shift it a little bit to the orange or the, to a yellow, you can see how the cast of the light changes colors and also how this highlight changes colors. So that's kind of neat. So that's just a simple point light. Let's just delete that for a second. Okay, there we go. And uh, let's add a new one. So I'm going to go shift A. I'm going to add a, a lamp and let's do the sunlight. So now the sunlight is essentially a light that is eternally or infinitely far away. Um, it has a direction though, which is really kind of nice so that you can kind of control the quality of the light. So right here, what you have is, you know, it's, it's kind of facing downward. If I take the rotate tool, um, there we go, and grab one axis and change it. You can see how the shadows change behind it there. Whoops, that was too far way too far. Okay, Blender's really lagging right now because of this graphics card. Um, but it's kind of cool. You can see how the shadow is changing um, around the, uh, the objects here. And the sunlight can be really, really powerful. You'll also notice that with the sunlight, and this is unique, that if I go down here, you can see, I mean, there's a highlight, but the highlight is, is definitely, you're not seeing the actual light itself. You're not seeing the reflection uh, of the light itself as much as you are with the others. The highlight's a lot lessened, that specular highlight that you kind of see right here. That's lessened a lot. So that is very nice light to kind of put way outside of your house, get it down low towards the window, and then get the angle right so it's kind of coming through the window. Um, and uh, it'll look like a nice morning or an evening sun, something like that. You can also add a spotlight, shift A, a lamp, and add a spotlight. And spotlights basically are exactly what you think they are. <clears throat> um, they have some really specific abilities to kind of, uh, let's see, take the strength up here okay to create some really nice and very dramatic lighting they obviously are also directional so you can kind of see how that's looking right there um, and so if I I change it so if I can bring it out here like this okay and then I rotate it you'll see it's 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 very dramatic obviously but with a, a spotlight, you also have uh, angles that you can control with the, uh, with the cone of light here. So I can make it uh, 
more narrow. See that? Or I can make it wider. I can just even type in like 120 degrees and now you can see it's pretty wide. The other thing that I can do that's really nice, let's put it back to 45 for a second here, is I also control how harsh the edge is with this blend parameter. Um, so if I change that and go to zero, it's a little sharper. If I ever, however, go to like 0 0.50, then you can see it's blending. Um, and then if I go to one, now it's a really soft blend from the edges in. So it's kind of nice that you can control that from zero to one. Um, <clears throat> the other thing you can do is check this, which is kind of nice. And uh, I don't know, it doesn't, let's see here, do, 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 do it. And it kind of shows you the light cone here on the 3D view, but notice that doesn't render. When I first saw that, I was like, oh, cool, it renders a light cone, because like, I love that you know, kind of thing. It does not do that, um, but that's OK. So anyway, that's, that's our spot. We have a hemispherical light, which again is also directional. So the only one that's really universal like that is, um, is the, the, the sunlight. Um, and now you can see this is kind of like a sunlight, and yet it's a little bit different in the fact that it's, um, it's a little bit more powerful than your point light. Let me get it a little closer and see if I can get it. But it is kind of creating light in kind of a, in, in, in kind of a hemisphere, like, um, kind of like a salad bowl shape. And you can see that if you zoom in on the, on the light, how it's kind of creating light in that way. And it creates a nice soft light. It's got harsh edge shadows. Um, by the way, with any of these things, you can control whether they cast shadows or not. So I can turn off cast shadows, and now I've got a light that's illuminating, okay, but it's not going to cast a shadow. You might go, well, when would you want to do that? I'll show you. So let's just take this, and um, let's create the last one. I'm going to take two of these. So I'm going to shift A, and I'm going to create an area light. Now, an area light is one of my favorites to do, because an area light is a lot like a photo when I'm a, because I'm more of a photographer, um, an area light's a lot like using a reflector or using a soft box or something like that. So <clears throat> when you click on an area light, one of the things that you can do is you can change the size of the area light. Um, so if you can see it's getting bigger here, okay? And that's essentially the area that the light is emitting light from. Um, so now if I take this, and let's say I rotate it like this, and then I'm going to actually swivel it around sideways, okay? And then now let's place it over here and create kind of a strong backlight, okay? Something like that. Take the strength up to 5,000. You know, now it's pretty bright. Bring that back a little bit like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool and very dramatic. And if I go over here and I place my uh, camera here, it looks pretty neat. And it's showing off the texture on the, on the floorboards here really nicely. See that? Okay, so it's got good texture because I've got backlighting. However, now I've got a lot of shadow here. So this might be a time when you would want to use a light that doesn't cast a shadow. Because maybe I like this, but I want to add a little fill light into my, um, my scene here. So I can just add another light here. So let's just add another lamp, another area lamp. Okay. Now I'll bring this one up forward. And, and you'll see as you play with this, and this is something that a lot of photographers know, there is always a huge correlation to the size of the light okay, and how the shadows react. So if I made the light smaller, these shadows would get sharper, um, and uh, you would see a different, the way it would be casting the light would be different. Um, so you do want to play with the size of the area if you're playing with area lights. 
Um, I, I love lighting. In If I were ever to go to Hollywood, they have lighting directors just for animation for movies. They have like, you know, master lighting people. That would be my thing in Hollywood. If I were ever to do that for special effects for animations, I'd love lighting because I just love playing with this stuff and making it look really good. So I'm going to take this and just move it over. And if I do that, you can see this massive highlight here. Um, so we, we want to probably get away from that. And then if I increase the um, size of the area light here, you can see, let's see, it's not, whoops, I didn't want to scroll, zoom in there, I wanted to zoom in here. So if I keep increasing the size of this, so now I've got a pretty big size thing. You can see how the shape of the light itself kind of changed in the reflection of that glossy object. But now, the other thing you might notice is if I swivel around here, if I pump the, uh, the, the power up a little bit, you'll see there'll be a new shadow coming back out. So this one was at 5,000. So let me take this one and put in like 4,000. And you can see now that I totally destroyed this shadow that's coming this way, OK? So if I uncheck the cast shadows, oh, it's still destroying the shadows just because of the brightness. So let me take this down here. Let's go to like 2,000. There we go. Now you can still see the shadow that's being cast from the first light that I created, OK? But you've got this fill light that's actually doing a nice job of showing me the textures of the objects. Does that make sense? I mean, when in doubt, you want to create lights that make sense, too. So in your scene, OK, you guys are building a room. So in that room, you might have a lamp, like a chandelier, hanging from the center of the ceiling in the middle of the room. So that's a good place to put a point light, OK? So it's radiating in all the directions, or maybe hemispherical so that it's not blowing out your ceiling. Um, but then outside, you'd want um, a sunlight, right? And in order to really see what's going on with the sunlight especially, you're going to need a roof or a ceiling on your, on, your, uh, um, on your scene. And then what I'll do oftentimes is I'll turn off one of the walls and set my camera up kind of sideways so that I can see how the light is looking um, and, and look through the window and stuff like that to kind of see how things look. Um, the other thing that you can do to help yourself out is if you hover over this view and you hit the z zero on the numpad, that's going to show you what the camera is seeing. And so a lot of times if I'm setting up lighting and I want to see what the camera is going to see exactly, you just hit zero on the numpad, that'll show you what the camera is seeing. And then as soon as you start to swivel or move the view, it goes back to the user view and allows you to kind of move around. So that's a good way of kind of playing with light. It's a lot of fun. Um, don't get too complicated with it um, because it, it can get really, really complicated. And I haven't even shown you the best part, which is you can make objects into lights. So you can actually add a cube, and then for its texture, you set it to an emission. And you can make a cube or a sphere or a plane into a light and control things really nicely. But maybe that'll be another demo some other time. But essentially, this is the best way to start off, and I think 99% of you will use the lights the way that I've described here. Um, and then if you want to do something a little bit more specific with like an object or something, uh, you know, we'll deal with that later. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, let's get moving.